Blackpool Pleasure Beach is known across the world for its traditional, operational wooden roller coasters which date back to the 1920s. But did you know, Blackpool Pleasure Beach has had 10 wooden roller coasters in all, four of which remain operational to this day and six which are gone but definitely not forgotten by the fans of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The former six wooden roller coasters at the Pleasure Beach are the Switchback, the Scenic Railway, the Velvet Coaster, the Virginia Reel, the Brownie Coaster and the Wild Mouse. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the history of the operational wooden roller coasters at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. My information sources for this video include the Riding on Rainbows book, rcdb.com, the Century of Fun book, Historic England and my own knowledge of these attractions. It's fascinating to read that in the 1970s, the Pleasure Beach looked at unique ways of increasing the wooden roller coaster's profitability, including seeking exemption from VAT for the paper ride ticket on the roller coasters on the basis that the Big Dipper was actually a device for transport for passengers similar to how a railway is. The case brought forward by Blackpool Pleasure Beach was actually looked at in court, but eventually the case was not won by the Pleasure Beach. I'm going to do this in a way where I order it by each of the roller coasters ages. For example, the Big Dipper was the first to open, so its history at the Pleasure Beach will be covered first, followed by the next oldest coaster and so on. So without any further delay, let's look at the history of the wooden roller coasters at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The Big Dipper opened at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in 1923. It was designed by John A. Miller and built by William Strickler at a cost of £25,000. The Big Dipper was the first roller coaster in the United Kingdom to feature John A. Miller's invention of under-track friction wheels, something we all commonly refer to as upstop wheels these days. The invention of under-track wheels has no doubt come on leaps and bounds since the introduction of them in the 1920s. But at the time, it was groundbreaking stuff leading to a whole new world of possibilities for roller coaster designers. Roller coaster designers were now able to create bigger drops, sharper turns, and be a lot more adventurous with their designs. Whilst Blackpool's Big Dipper was the first in the UK to use this new technology, it wasn't the first roller coaster in the world to use it. Another roller coaster called Big Dipper was the first, however, there's conflicting reports of where this coaster was actually located. By that, I mean two of my used sources of information for this video both say that the roller coaster was in America, but they both say it was in a different park, so I really can't clarify for sure on this one. Whilst the Big Dipper continues to be operational at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, many roller coasters of a similar age built using the same technology are long gone. The Big Dipper is the second oldest roller coaster in the UK. The scenic railway at Dreamland Margate is claimed to be the oldest, but considering that was partially rebuilt in recent history due to fire damage, it could actually be argued that the Big Dipper is the oldest now. I'll leave that for everyone else to decide. In 1936, the Big Dipper was modified by Charles Page. The original layout made a greater than 90 degree turn where the small turn under the big one is today. It extended east to where Big Pizza Kitchen currently stands. As a rough guide, it followed the route of the Big One's lift hill and station. So originally, Big Dipper was bordering the southern boundary of the Pleasure Beach, but when more land was acquired by the Pleasure Beach, commonly known as South Park amongst the staff at Pleasure Beach these days, the Big Dipper was modified to make use of the new space as demonstrated by the current layout. According to sources, the original layout of the Big Dipper was actually deemed to be too boring once the Grand National had opened, so the acquisition of new space gave the Pleasure Beach the chance to make better use of the land and improve the Big Dipper. During the modifications, Joseph Emberton redesigned the Big Dipper station. Emberton's architecture was taking shape all over Blackpool Pleasure Beach during the same era, and to this day can still be seen around the Pleasure Beach, whether it be his original work or rebuilt versions of his designs. The Big Dipper has had two high-profile fires in its history. Firstly, in 1953, damaging the station, and secondly, in 1975, damaging the station again, but this time, damaging the ride structure too. In the 1990s, Blackpool Pleasure Beach added an extra carriage onto one of the Big Dipper's trains to boost the income from paper ride tickets. The 90s at Blackpool Pleasure Beach is sometimes referred to as a glory era, and that's largely because of how busy the park always seemed to be back then. 
the Big Dipper operated with one free carriage train and one four carriage train. Not only did it help move the queue a bit quicker, but it kept the money coming in at a nice pace too with an extra eight riders on every other train. I'm actually gutted I didn't get to do the back row in the fourth carriage on Big Dipper. Imagine that. During the construction of Infusion in winter 2006, Big Dipper's turnaround to the lift hill was temporarily removed, which sparked calls for concern with a lot of Coaster fans on forums thinking, oh no, the Big Dipper's going to be removed. Of course, the Big Dipper wasn't removed. Roller Coaster, now known as Nickelodeon Streak, opened in 1933, having been designed by Charles Page. It was known as Roller Coaster, or the Coaster, up to late 2010. In 2011, it was rebranded to Nickelodeon Streak as part of the Nickelodeon Land changeover from Beaver Creek. According to sources, the lift hill and other parts of the Velvet Coaster were used in the construction of Roller Coaster. The Velvet Coaster, the actual coaster and not Weatherspoons, had been at Blackpool Pleasure Beach between 1909 and 1932. It was a side friction wooden roller coaster and had a very similar footprint to Roller Coaster itself. Roller Coaster used to be called Roller Sofa by Roller Coaster enthusiasts because of how comfortable the trains were. It also had no restraints at all up to 2006. In 2006, seatbelts were added. Adding seatbelts to the trains slowed down operations on Roller Coaster to the point of two train operation dropping down to one train operation. Midway through the 2007 season, Pleasure Beach altered the train on Roller Coaster. It was now using carriages previously used on the Big Dipper and as a result was no longer referred to as Roller Sofa. The change of the train made for a more entertaining, thrilling ride experience. The train change did mean that Roller Coaster now had lap bars, but that didn't take away from the now better, more thrilling rider experience. Rumours of closure and permanent removal hung over Roller Coaster at the back end of the 2008 season. So it was a breath of fresh air for fans to see it operational at the beginning of the 2009 season. However, when daily opening came around, the coaster was closed and referred to as an SBNO attraction. It wasn't even listed as an attraction on the Pleasure Beaches Park map. On busier days of the 2009 season, most notably during the Celebrate Summer offer, Roller Coaster used to open at 12 noon through to park closing time to help ease the pressure of the large crowds. Roller Coaster started the 2010 season as it had started the 2009 season. It was open throughout the WOW weekends but returned to its SBNO status from spring onwards. However, once again, it opened on busier days or when the big one was closed due to high winds. It was announced in July 2010 that Nickelodeon Land was going to become a thing at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. So Beaver Creek closed in September 2010 and the transformation to Nickelodeon Land started from there. Roller Coaster would become Nickelodeon Streak in the rebrand, with it being fully repainted in orange and the train getting extra styling to fit with the new IP. There was plenty of unconfirmed talk from that time suggesting Roller Coaster was strongly considered for removal so that Nickelodeon Land would have a new modern roller coaster as the area's signature attraction. Blue Flyer opened at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in 1934. It was designed by Charles Page following his completion of Roller Coaster. Blue Flyer, previously known as the Little Dipper and Zipper Dipper, is claimed as the second oldest children's roller coaster in the world, with the first being a wooden roller coaster called Kiddie Coaster at Playland Park in New York. Both roller coasters remain operational and were both built by an American company called the National Amusement Device Company. It has been known as the Blue Flyer since the Nickelodeon Land rebrand in 2011. The Grand National opened in 1935, having been designed by Charles Page. It's currently only one of two operational pre-World War II Mobius wooden roller coasters left in the world. The other Mobius Loop wooden roller coaster is Kennywood's Racer, which opened in 1927. It's often perceived that the Grand National's trains swap tracks during the ride cycle. They don't, but that's the illusion created by it being a Mobius Loop roller coaster. This feat is achieved by having a single track that makes two parallel circuits, passing through the station twice, and a ride duration that only takes passengers around half of the full circuit. I feel like I'm opening it. Is it one or two coasters on the coaster count debate here again? The Grand National was the fifth Mobius Loop roller coaster in the world to open. The first was John A. Miller's Derby Racer of 1933 at Eclude Beach in Cleveland, Ohio. 
It was seen at the time as a revolutionary new ride and one of the most exciting rides in the world. Following the Grand National opening in 1935, the Pleasure Beach is reported to have had a very good season. Riders would pay one shilling to ride and the ride packed in around 2,000 riders an hour. The Grand National's name is of course inspired by the popular racing event at Aintree. However, the ride itself is believed to have been inspired by a racing twin track wooden roller coaster called Cyclone, which was located at Long Beach, California. Harry G. Traver built that coaster and would go on to work with Charles Page on designing and building the Grand National. The original station for the Grand National was designed by Joseph Emberton, but through the years alterations were made to the station, taking it away from the original designs. In 1990, the decision was taken to address the previous alterations. The station was rebuilt back to the original styling by using Emberton's original designs. Like the Big Dipper, the Grand National operated with four carriage trains in the 1990s, but rather than just one train doing so, all four trains were four carriage trains. The Grand National had a station fire in May 2004, Two of its trains were damaged as well as the station completely destroyed. Trauma Towers and Alice in Wonderland also took damage from the fire. It is reported that Blackpool Pleasure Beach staff on site tried to use water from Valhalla and the river caves to calm the fire before firemen arrived on scene. The fire took place in the evening and outside of operational hours. I actually remember my parents gently breaking this news to me before I saw it on the news. To say I was gutted is an understatement. Thankfully, the Pleasure Beach had no plans to retire the Grand National and the next day a large sign saying we have the technology, we will rebuild it was placed at the ride's entrance. The Grand National returned to run another race in October 2004 with a rebuilt station and the two surviving trains back in service. It operated throughout the 2005 season with the two remaining trains from the fire. New trains for it were announced on the 235 Club Forum midway through the 2005 season. It opened in spring 2006 with four brand new trains, a new operating system and a new computerised braking system in the station. From that time on, the Grand National was no longer a manually operated roller coaster as the brake levers were replaced by the computerised system. The Grand National's new trains were provided by PTC. There we have it. A brief look at the fascinating history of the wooden roller coasters at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have really enjoyed going back over the history of these coasters and will always appreciate their legacy at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Here's hoping I haven't made any massive errors with any of the information and here's hoping you're not bored of my voice. What's your favourite wooden roller coaster memory at Blackpool Pleasure Beach? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And before you go, please give this video a like. It's a huge help with keeping this channel in the eyes of YouTube users. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next Pleasure Beach Experience video.